especially people getting one of these dogs, I mean, they're a divine looking dog, but they might be in for a bit of a shock in that they're not exactly like a lot of other dogs. Yeah. Um, most people um, go for these dogs when the, the puppies, which are absolutely beautiful puppies, and of course they, they grow up into a, a large dog. These are the, the kings of the dog world for dominating and reading you, mm. body language. Yeah. So you, you know, you've got to be a person who, who's willing to dominate the dog and become the actual pack leader. In, the, in a wolf pack, the, the pack leader hands out all the discipline. You don't have to hit them with a three by two and beat them senseless to dominate a dog. You can quite easily do it by that, or by body language, holding the head, holding them. Once, you, once you're disciplined and at 18 months, you can see that they, they start to calm down and at about 20 months, you've got a very well-adjusted dog a, and a beautiful dog, a beautiful mm. companion. You can do uh, many things with these. You, you can sled them, you can weight pull them. Uh, they're starting to pack them. <laughs> We should just point out the differences perhaps between the Alaskan Malamute and the Siberian Husky. Obviously one, the Siberian Husky is the Russian side yeah. and these are the American side yeah. of the uh, The, North the Pole. Siberian Husky is, is, is still um, a sled dog, a haulage dog, but it's more designed for medium light weight and a lot faster speed. Where the Alaskan Malamute is designed where the Eskimo would team up there and they would go out, out for food and they might, might go out for a week, but they had to get that food back. So they had to have big, heavy dogs to bring that load back. Alaskan Malamutes have become very popular over the last few years, but remember you're buying a very large, dominant breed of dog. So you have to be prepared to firstly train that animal from the very start, and secondly, exercise it. The other thing is, being a big bone breed, they do suffer from hip dysplasia. So before you buy a puppy, make sure the parents have been screened and passed. They also suffer from day blindness, so they have to be tested by an ophthalmologist and cleared before breeding. Finally, it's a rapidly growing breed, so get the nutrition right from the very start. Talk to your breeder and talk to your vet, and make sure you feed a balanced diet, otherwise you will end up with bone problems that will last the rest of the animal's life. They're more like seal pups or something. Yeah, they're just, it's just a more, more so just sort of undercoat and a bit of guard hair on top. Yeah. And they just vary in their guard lengths. Mm. And very cute. Very cute. You could fall in love with one of these, take it home and then finish up with an adult dog. Yeah, they do, they get big. Do you feel safe if you're walking around with these? I mean, would they protect you? Uh, some would, some don't. People, most people probably wouldn't try anything because of the look of them. They're not a guard dog, but... No. Yeah. No guardian instincts in them whatsoever. In that, where they come from, there was a, a tribal dog in that all the uh, Eskimos use them. And they never had to guard anything. There was nothing there to guard. I, myself, when we had three, we got robbed. <laughs> so <laughs> it just doesn't work. So this is fairly normal. Is it once a year or more than No, that? with bitches it's twice a year. Twice a year. And with males it usually once a year or... So they or have a hormonal molt and a seasonal molt. Yeah. Mm. Anybody who's thinking about getting one of these dogs should think about, you know, they've got to be grilled quite regular. I, I think they're wonderful because they're, they're their own characters and they're, they're such a, a loving a fantastic dog once you've got over the initial stages of the young adolescent and I just love the breed it's a beautiful breed and the, the beautiful tear and marvelous.